Hello, friends, and welcome to This Week at Little Hills once again. I am so glad to be with you as we find ourselves in the midst of the 12 days of Christmas. And we are going to think about day six of our devotional journey in just a moment. Also, this week's catechism question. But right up front, I just want to mention, we do have Sunday service tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. It is New Year's Eve, but really, what could we do that's better as we close out another year than to gather as God's people and to worship our God on this first Sunday after Christmas. So I hope to see you then. We will have Sunday School Express right after service as we always do as well. Well, as we think about preparing our hearts, we, we find ourselves confronted with the issue that we are not good. Day six of our devotional journey thinks about goodness, one of the aspects of the spiritual fruit, and yet we are not good. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't look at us and say, oh, there's some goodness, I'm going to save this person. Oh, this person has shown enough merit or will show enough merit, I'm going to save this person. He looked at us as sinners, people who are not good, and he offered us salvation. That is the heart of what we face as the reality of our world. In our catechism question, which pairs very nicely with this, question 16 for this week, the question is, what is sin? It says sin is rejecting or ignoring God in the world he created, rebelling against him by living without reference to him, not being or doing what he requires in his law, resulting in our death and the disintegration of all creation. That's what we've done, the opposite of goodness. We've actually disintegrated his creation. And I think we can see that when we go about our lives, we find ourselves constantly causing that disintegration. How do we inflict pain and hurt? How do we rip things apart? How do we know what we should do and yet we do other things, and all of us do that. What do we find in the goodness of our God though? Right back to Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrated his love for us while we were sinners. Well, I have one of my snowman friends here. I've shown you some of them over this season. And this, this gentle snowman here, as you notice, may, is not fully inflated. In fact, he's being held up by a frame. And it struck me as I was thinking about him and where we were going to on this day of our journey, that he's the perfect picture of what we face. He cannot inflate himself anymore. His material has gained too many itty bitty holes, not the sort I can patch. The material just doesn't hold air correctly anymore. And so if you turn on the fan, no matter how hard you blow it, he just falls over. He can't hold himself up. That's what we're like when we try to do good on our own. When we try to reflect that spiritual fruit through our own strength. Instead, we go right back to sin and causing disintegration. But what was I able to do for my snowman friend? I was able to help prop him up, tie him up a little bit, put him up on this frame, and here he is still spreading joy, even though he can't lift himself up. And that's what God does for us. That's the goodness he shows to us, that while we're disintegrating his creation and and being unkind to each other and to our God, God shows us the goodness, the generosity of his love. And that's our calling then to respond to. As we realize that we're snowmen that can't hold ourselves up and we need that frame, that love of God to be able to do anything, how can we not be generous with others? How can we not give the benefit of the doubt? How can we not show God's love as we go into this new year? That is what we're called to do. He loved us while we were still sinners. I love others too. Just look at this guy's joyful face. Yes, he can't lift himself up, but he can spread joy as he's being lifted up, as I put him on that frame. And when we think about God's goodness, his generosity to us, that's what we're called to do. We lift it up, but then we, we are able to reflect that joy, just as my snowman friend here is reflecting joy, by smiling as he's lifted up. That's what we're thinking about in today's devotional journey aspect. And so if, if you have some thoughts on that that you'd like to add, put them in the comments below, please. And of course, we'll talk more about that catechism question on sin and Sunday School Express tomorrow night, 15 minutes after service. Let me just remind you also, our prayer vigil for New Year's Eve starts at 11 p.m. tomorrow night. It's going to take over a Christmas stream, our, our 24 hour day looping stream of Christmassy joy throughout the Christmas season all the way up to Epiphany. So tomorrow night, you'll be able to pull that up and you'll see this wonderful time to spend before our Lord in prayer, before we go into the new year. It will loop a little bit into the late night hours 
of the new year as well. So pick that up at 11 p.m. tomorrow night or midnight. It'll loop again if you missed it at 11. And let's bring in the new year together, praying before our God, praying that the one who shows us goodness will enable us to show goodness to others. Merry Christmas, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>